to see. Where could it be? you doing? Good? Um, you sure? You don't, um, you don't look that, um, you don't look like yourself. That's what I'm trying, what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, I know you had your, probably had stuff to do, but you are. 20 minutes late to um, our get together. And, um, you know, we have lots to do. And, um, you know, we have um, lots to do. We're about to go in into our business meeting. We've been prepping for a long time. Hey, are you, are you sure you're okay? Uh, I know this isn't you. No, not, um, not being late part. <laughs> I know that, that happens to everyone. But no, I'm, I'm referring to Your eyes, they just, um, they're not like they usually are, you know, they're usually, you know, can't really explain it, but today they just look different, different. Look, we don't have to do this work right now. We do have a meeting in in an hour, but I think this is more important. So, I'll put this aside for now. And I know you and I don't really know each other, but I just want you to know that you and I can, we can, we can talk to each other, right? Okay. Listen, you don't have to tell me what you're going through, but I just want you to know that you don't have to keep it to yourself. Just keeping it to yourself can be... It could be damaging, right? And I'm not trying to criticize you or... Or anything like that, right? You know, I go through a lot of worry. I go through a lot of stress, anxiety. There's people that don't let me down. And there's people that the closest ones, right? There's people that do let me down. That hurts. Right, after we put our trust in those people and then they hurt us. But no one's perfect. No one's perfect. I think what You know what I do is, 
when I'm going through all these things, when I think the world is gonna end, everything's just against me, and the storms are just too much. I just kinda close my eyes and I talk. No, I don't talk to my parents, I don't talk. Um, well, I don't have a wife, but, you know, I, I talk to someone else. Someone of a higher being. Someone who, who cares for me, right? Yeah, you, you probably know who I'm talking about. I know you, you've seen me with my Bible in my work case. Um, you see me read the Bible. Why, why have I never, why have I never told you about it? I, I don't know. I don't know, I just... It's not that I felt ashamed or anything like that. Oh, oh, who do I talk to, right? Um, well, I talk to my God. Who's my God? Um, my Father God. My Abba Father. My Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ and the precious Holy Spirit. They're not three gods. They are three in one. I know it's hard to wrap your mind around it, but that's just how it is. Right, and when I read the Bible, I don't just read, I, I meditate on it. I really, really sense God talking to me. I feel a sense of peace, a sense of power, right? So every time I'm going through something, something really personal, really intimate that I can't tell anyone, I tell it to, to God. I say, God, I'm just really, really, really going through it right now. Please help me. I'm weak, but you are strong. You know my faults. You know me better than myself. Please comfort me. You know, and I start crying many times, right? I cry to my God, it's like I'm running to him. Just, just falling on him. And I know every time that he'll catch me. He's the only one I can truly trust. So my friend, I, I don't know what you're going through. I really don't know, but God does, my God does, our God does, he knows what you're going through, tell it to him, tell it to him, he knows our anxieties, he knows our worries, he knows everything. Right? Why doesn't God help you if? He knows everything. <laughs> you know, I, I ask myself the same thing when I first started in my faith. But God isn't a genie where we can say, God, I need this, I need that, I need this. 
right? God tells us to have, God tells us to know him, right? But, but God isn't a genie, right? We just don't use God for us to help us for our own, for our own stuff, right? He's not a genie, he's not a robot. He's a being who is alive. He feels and he calls us to know him, to have fellowship with him. Fellowship, I say fellowship, I mean like a true friendship, true relationship with him. What does that look like? What is similar, like what I was telling you about, you're just crying out to God. You're pouring out your heart to him, right? You know, and I say, I repent, I say, God, I'm sorry for going against your word. I'm sorry for doing everything on my own and not trusting in you. Please help me out. I know these things I want to happen in my life, but you know what's better? That your will be done, right? That's how God wants us to talk to him, just to pour our hearts to him, to pursue to him, to pursue to him. Um, I'm gonna pull out my Bible and read a verse to you, is that, is that okay? Yeah? We can forget about the time or, or I think this moment right here is more important than the meeting right now. So, yeah, I'm gonna pull out my Bible. That's okay. Okay. So this is the Bible. This is the Holy Word of God. And the Bible refers to Jesus as the Word, the living Word, the Word made flesh. And I know this year, this year is Jesus. He's the living Word. Every time I read, I don't just read, but I really listen to the voice of God, what God is revealing himself, what God is revealing about himself to me, what God is telling me through his word and what adjustments I need to make to my life, right? But yes, this is um, from Matthew 15. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, send her away. But she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him, Lord. Help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. The faith of a canon. You know, when she pleaded to God, she said, God, have mercy on me. And, you know, Jesus didn't say anything, right? People would say Jesus ignored her. But no, Jesus knows all things. He wanted to show. He wasn't ignoring, right? He wanted to show that we, 
must pursue him, must pursue him, and he'll pursue us, right? To be desperate for him, it's not, again, it's not easy, it's easier said than done. But God helps us to do this, to be desperate and pursue him faith in him through circumstances in our life and he uses moments in our life where we're so low so lost desperate need a family members dying just like this get in a woman just for us to cry out to him to cry out to him you know when I cry out to him after so to him I feel so much better so much better it's just I can't explain the feeling I don't know if you're Christian or not but that is my faith right? my faith in God I can trust in a God who's always looking after me Right, and even if I wander away, do my own thing, it hurts, right? Well, God warns me, to, and I'm hurt, right? But God still comes after me. He still comes after me. He still takes care of me. Mm. So yeah, I, I encourage you. We don't really know each other too well, right? But I encourage you to cry out to God, right? Cry out to Christ. God sent him here to die for our sin. He paid for our sin on the cross. He was without fault, without sin. Perfect, he's perfect every way. I really make that personal, right? That he remembered me such a wicked, terrible person. I know you you say that I'm a good person and that yeah I'm kind but no. The truth is I'm not, I really am not, I fall short, I fall short and I've, you know, I've hurt people, my words, you know, I've been in bad relationships, I let people down, I'm not perfect, Christ is perfect, and That's enough. That's enough. And that brings me peace. While he was on that cross, he looked at me. Remembered me and he looked at me. Of all space and time, he looked at me. And he looked at you. I don't know if you believe or not, but that's just what I believe. to die for you, for me, for everyone else, and this whole world. It's beautiful. It really is beautiful. But the story didn't end with his death. He rose on the third day. He defeated death. It because he rose and has eternal life. If we believe in him, confess that he is our Lord and Savior with our mouths and believe in our hearts, that we are saved, saved from just all 
Just say it from everything that's evil. Say it from that eternal punishment. That's called hell. But it's more than that, you know, it's not the end. The Bible tells us we have to have fear of God, right? But it's a fear that comes from love. It's a fear that comes from love. I fall short, right? And I go to God, go to Christ. My first time when I came to Christ, it's because I didn't want to go to hell. I didn't want to go to hell because you know, it's a place, I'm sure you heard of what hell is, right? Yeah, like a place of torment and anguish and fire just burning throughout a wall, throughout all time. It's an eternity, right? Yeah, it's scary. So I said, no, God, I want to be on your side. I want to go to hell. Yeah, it's true, but it's more than that. Because even when I did that, I wandered away. From the faith. I wandered away, I did my own thing. Sin against God. But there was just this emptiness inside of me. Right? This void. Loneliness. And the most darkest part of my life after I wandered away. Jesus found me. Jesus found me sitting down on the floor next to my bed, weeping and weeping. He found me sat next to me. I felt him sat next to me. And he just comforted me. He says, I'm here. Right, so I repented. I repented. Yes, God doesn't want us to go to hell. He wants us to be with Him in eternity in that glorious place in heaven. You know, in heaven is, you know, people describe it as a place just like perfectness, you know, grass and green, green grass. You know, everything's alive. Like we've seen it, you know, people's um, depictions of heaven in movies right but no if, if Jesus if God is not in heaven then it's not heaven heaven is being with Jesus Christ yeah <laughs> I'm pointing a lot on you right now but that's just where my heart is that's my heart to tell you Jesus is our best friend, our God, yes, but he's like our best friend. He is our best friend that we have, and I want to spend it with him. just want to spend it with him. Sometimes I'm so worked up in my life and circumstances and work. Just like before we came here, I was just really stressed about this meeting, but now it's like, Because Jesus is more important to me. Right? I'm not ashamed to tell you that. No, you know, I, you may not agree with me, but just hope you understand where, what I believe in. This is truth for me. This is truth for me. Is it okay if I read another verse? Yeah? The meeting? Oh, we can, we can go, we can go over that. Um, yeah, is that okay with you though? Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure it'll be okay. 
for a few minutes late. I'm glad you're listening to me, what I have to say, and you know, and, and I'm noticing that <laughs> that you look better already. Um, and again, I don't know if you believe this or not, but I just want to, I just want to share. But anyway, this is in John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John is considered the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, when he came to this earth, he was around 33 years old doing his, doing his kingdom work, right? Sharing the good news, gathering his disciples and just going out and telling the people of salvation for people to believe in him, that he is the son of God. And like I said, he died. People, the, what they're called the Pharisees, right? They follow God's law, but they didn't believe Jesus was the Son of God, and they killed him. Jesus' own people killed him, beat him, tortured him, and yet Christ still died for him. He died for all of them. That's that's crazy. That's true love you know when Christ dies for people and forgives those who are hurting him and killing him that's that's a godly level it really is but Jesus tells us to be more like him right it's hard but every day I say Holy Spirit help me to be more like Jesus Help me to be more love, more kind, more patient, more forgiving, more forgiving. People have hurt us, but he tells us to forgive them. It's hard, but again, there's people that whipped him, spat on him. They nailed him. Whipped him. And he said, Father, forgive them. He said, Father, forgive them. So Luke 23. You know, when Jesus is on that cross and they put him through the worst. And they crucified him. And there was two people next to him. So this is, I'll just read 32. Through 34. Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. They divided up his clothes by casting lots. <laughs> he said, Father, forgive them. It's harder on my end my head around it. You know, I'm such a vengeful person sometimes. I have so much resentment towards people that hurt me. And Jesus tells me, forgive them as I have forgiven you. That makes me feel so much better than when I have so much hurt in my heart. When I truly start forgiving, I feel better. How do I know all this is true? How do I know there's a God? And I'm not just praying to 
empty space. It's <laughs> a good question. Yeah, it's, it's just faith, it's just faith. My lowest point in my life, I said, I know there's more to this life than just, you know, a nine to five. There's more to life than going out and drinking and partying. I said, there's got to be more than this. And I didn't find Christ. He found me. He found me. In the Word, it says that He's the way, the truth in the life. And I know that doesn't, I don't know if that answers the question, but it's just faith, it's just, choose to believe, right? It's hard to believe in someone who, you know, there's no, what you call, like video proof, Like records or, you know, things like that. There wasn't, none of that. None of that in the past. But that reminds me of a verse. Can I, can I go to it? This is John 20. I love John. I love all the Gospels, but John is, really speaks to me in many aspects of my life, all, all the Word does, I just love, I just love John, this is from John 20, let's just read from 19. When, uh, this is after Jesus resurrected from the dead and he was appearing to people and he was alive, right? That he fulfilled scripture and there was a savior of the world. He was about to appear to his disciples that he was alive. I'll go ahead and read it. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As a father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not, if you do not forgive them, they're not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, "We have seen the Lord." But he said to them, "Unless I see the nail marks." in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand to his eye. I will not believe. So Thomas was skeptical, right? Even though he saw Jesus right there after he died. He wanted proof. Proof there was a life right now. Sometimes many people say, I want proof. I want proof. But to be honest with you, it's like, even if Jesus came to this earth right now, for the whole news, 
when people really start to believe in him and follow him. Do you think they actually will? People's hearts are just so hard and I don't, I personally believe they won't. They just want to do their own way. Reject God and do their own way. It's like the story, I won't go to it. Maybe we can go to it um, another time. But in the book of Genesis, I'm sorry, the book of Exodus, I'm sure you heard about Moses and the, you know, crossing the sea and opening. Yeah, you've heard it. Yeah, when um, God divided the water. Yeah, you've seen it in movies. Yeah, but anyway, yeah, God's people saw the great things God did, but even when they were in that wilderness, they rebelled against God, they complained, and they went back to do their own thing, worshipped other gods and idols, were ungrateful. So again, Jesus came to this earth today where everyone believed. No, I don't think so. I don't think that has to do with anything in terms of seeing and believing. It just comes down to the person's heart. What they want to believe, what faith they have. But I'll keep reading. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God, then Jesus, listen to this, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed, blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Then Jesus told him, listen to this, then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen, and yet have believed. Wow. So that's us today, right? We haven't seen this in our eyes. Blessed are those who have believed and have not seen. It's just, it's really faith. I can't explain it to you. You just have to experience it, you know. You know, and I thank God that I got, that I've been through the worst of times. I've gone through those losses and pain. Because if I didn't, I never would have met God. I never would have met Jesus. And now I can tell people, hey, there's a God that loves you. There's a God that's looking at you, that loves you. And he's running after you. You just have to run after him. But even, even if you wander away, he'll still come looking for you. He'll still come looking for you. In Matthew, um, again, it says, that Jesus will leave the 99 sheep to go look for that one lost one, the wandering sheep. <laughs> that's, that's beautiful. You know, I try every day to
Let's try. I try to do better, try to be better, but many times I stumble. But Christ is there and He covers me. Something I can't really explain to you, but I invite you, if you haven't already, to try it. To cry out to Christ. He's listening. But, <laughs> hey, our meeting's in three minutes. I know we didn't really have time to prepare. Again, I thought this was more important, but thank you for hearing me out. Jesus loves you. He does. And I'm not just saying that. I know you probably heard in the streets, hey, Jesus loves you. But he really does. He really does. He really, really does. Again, I make it personal. Like people say, yes, Christ died for us. Absolutely. But I say, Christ died for me. Christ died for me when he was on that cross. He thought of me. He didn't want me lost. He didn't want me into the eternal punishment. He wants me with him in heaven. And he wants you with him in heaven as well. Hey, sit up. Okay, if I, I pray for you. Yeah? Okay. I'll pray for us and then we'll head to our meeting. Father, thank you for this time, God. Lord, we had so many things to do with the business of our life and meetings and our work, but thank you, Lord, I had this time to talk to my Worker, my friend, about you, Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray for my friend here who I don't know if they believe in you or not, God, but if they don't, Lord, Christ, find them, Lord Jesus. Find them, Lord, that they get to know you. That you are the most realest thing in this whole universe. The word says you are the way, the truth, and the life. So help my friend Christ. And if he does know you, Lord, and he's wandered away, Christ, you know the difficulties he's going through. Let him cast his anxieties, his worries. Let them cast all. Oh anxieties and worries on you, God. Yes, Lord, you care for us. We can't handle it, but you can, Lord. You are our strength. So be with my friend here. Bless them. Lord, give them strength. And help us, Lord, in our work and day-to-day -day lives. Not for our own personal reasons, but everything, Lord, to glorify. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. It's time for our meeting. It's going to go well. I know it. Do you have a Bible? No? Is it okay if I... This is crazy. Is it okay if I give you my Bible? No, 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 it's okay. I, I, um, <laughs> I have a lot of Bibles at home. I like collecting them. Can you? It's okay if I do this to you. Okay, 
encourage you to read Matthew and read the Gospels of Jesus. And just again, cry out to God. So, here. There you go. Hey, uh, again, thank you for allowing me to talk with you about this. And I'm sorry if I didn't before. But I see that you look better. You look better. And no, it's not me. It's not me. It's Christ by His Holy Spirit. But, alright, let's get going.